In the empty valley, they built a giant, and they gave it the name of a giant in Greek mythology, Titan. Today we are in another Titan. Let me tell you, already I've only spent about 15, 20 minutes. It is a way different design. In other words, it's actually a lot smaller, a lot more compressed. Okay, we're gonna venture off into the uh, air intake. Support beam over here has already collapsed. All the other blast valve, the locks, they've been removed. This entire flooring here is just leaning on one side. I'm even looking at the, uh, the gantry here, look at this. This whole gantry, I mean, it just, you can see the whole thing. The sulfuric dioxide tank has all been removed. You've got to test every surface. You have no idea what's sturdy or not. Looks like an earthquake just hit. Look at this. It's been salvaged. All the HVAC's all intact. We've got a copy of the asbestos on the left-hand side. Look at that. Straight through. Someone's been firing. Whoa! First thing you notice, it's not a sulfur, but also like almost charcoal. Someone has set this one alight. I feel like an arson insurance agent right now. I mean, it's just way too much desecration. I say we head out to the silos. I'm just uh, interested to see whether there's water and if there is a crib that we, we actually climb all the way down to the very bottom. So back into our tunnel junction number 10, we're gonna head left. But damn, look at that. That's the entrance to the antenna tunnels. Very apocalyptic. God looks cool. But uh, man, the amount of work restoration wise. We're gonna make a hard left. And you're thinking, where is the flooring gone? That's the RP1 room. Imagine the RP1 tank will still be intact. Well, the RP1 tank is dry. We still have water in ours. Look the way around. Yeah, looking back there, look at that. It's just absolute carnage. Let's see the rest of this. Well, the paint's peeled off, obviously. I mean, I don't see any areas that have been compromised. Once again, a lot of our rust, condensation. A lot of these cable trays have been removed. Okay, another obstacle course coming up. Leading into the launcher area number one, as well as the, uh, the emergency egress hatch. And we also have our first sign of water. That's some heavy cable. It's just been dumped there. Launch to area number one. First blast lock. Still works. 60 years and our blast lock still works fine.
Look at that. Blast lock number two. And got the blast valve just above it. Okay, we have water again. Well, there's still growths are all gone. Damn, it's a lot of water here. <laughs> okay. So this is an invitation to Mike Rowe, Dirty Jobs. Mike, come and visit us. Nuclear Bunker Living Channel. DM us. Message to Mike Rowe. Look at this. Okay, what are we thinking? So the propellant terminal is this way. L1, solo. And the equipment building is directly behind me, so we're gonna to go to the um, propellant terminal, but uh, I need to sort of um, maneuver myself from this cesspool. It absolutely reeks chemicals, whatever other biological matter is, uh, is present. Oh. As soon as your boots are wet, it becomes very slippery. This is the propellant terminal. It's, um, I mean, look, there's so much water in here, you can't even see the other tunnel, which, which leads into the actual silo on the other side. But um, come closer here. Because the water is at a certain level, you have a different reverberation, a different ambiance. Check this out, come closer. For any um, musicians out there, it's a pretty hard reverb to duplicate in a recording studio, that is. But, um, yeah. Ah! Back to the obstacle course. Should we try left? What do you think? You do not want to fall in there. And that was clearly not in the brochure either, so we're going to go left. Just a sloshing around, it's like... Oh. Okay, that's it. <laughs> I can't believe how much water there is. That's a lot of water. <laughs> what? Okay, I'm just trying to get across the other side. Hopefully this holds. Oh man. Where are you, Mike Rowe? Dirty jobs. So you can't even get to the solo. Oh yeah, this is deep. Okay. Looks like the deepest I can go. Yeah. It's impossible to get any further. You literally need a raft to get to the other side. Man. Yep, you definitely need a raft. 
That silo is definitely flooded. The equipment building is flooded. That means probably about, a, I will say the silo is in about probably 145, 150 feet deep in water right now. So I'm gonna turn back. I just cannot get, a, I cannot get across the other side. But have a look at that. If only I was in the Mediterranean and not in a silo right now. Okay, so I'm gonna swing around. To the condensation. There is so much condensation on the pipes. It's like this particular Titan is actually sweating. I mean, it's all wet, look at that, it's all drenched. So I need to work out how I'm going to get across. Making our way out of launcher air number one. We're gonna make a hand left at the end, heading to the other terminal junction building. We have the other crossroads of R2 and R3. Apparently R2 is a little dry, a little bit more dry than this one over here. We will soon see. Yeah. Goodbye blast light number two. So that is launch area number two. Now two tunnels, somewhat long, starts to curve to the right, and in front of us we'll have the propeller terminal, then to the right we'll have launch area number two, which, so far it's a lot more dry here, so imagine that part of the silo will be a lot more dry, and let's see how deep we can actually venture into it. Look, first thing you notice, it's actually really good condition. See this, the black neoprene, which separates this junction to the tunnel. Look at that, zero compromise. In some of the other parts, you can see how the tunnels basically drop by up to two foot. This one over here, it's in really good condition. That's a good tunnel, look at that. That's the original paint. And there's no water, so we're going to turn left here. That's kind of weird. I thought this door is actually wider than the other Titan. 
This actually looks a lot wider. It's kind of weird. Back to the propeller channel. And we just want over here connect. You can actually see the tunnel, which leads to the vertical shaft as well as the silo. And probably five or six episodes ago, we actually explored the propeller channel for the, very, for the very first time in L3. And we actually got to climb up top of there. Very cool. The propeller terminal is very, very clean inside. Very clean. Make our way to the silo. Okay. L2 to the left and equipment building. And I'm wondering um, how whether we can actually climb down all the way down to the bottom basement level of the equipment building. So, but first up, let's do the silo. Oh wow. Wow. Look at that. To our left. That's a tunnel that leads to the other panel terminal. And here's a really good perspective of the tunnel which leads to the equipment building. And then you got this um assembly here which was part of the crib so that water is probably um probably about 80 90 feet deep here and people actually made it across <laughs> look at that congratulations joel dylan damien smokes weed were you on weed when you did that damien <laughs> i can't believe i actually climbed out that way Doesn't it? Yep. It's kind of weird, man. Yep. By at least five or six feet smaller. For sure, without question. It looks, it's definitely smaller. Yeah. Normally a tide on one, I mean, it's like you're looking about 42 feet across. This looks about 34, 35 feet. Really weird. Look at this. Even Joel has made it to the top of the catwalk. Way to go, Joel! So we are leading into the equipment building of launcher area number two. Is that safe? Oh, I'm gonna skip that. Oh wow, let's go down. I got a funny feeling um, the fourth level is where all the rubble is. Yeah, this one's been completely scrapped. The other uh, climatron or the train, yeah, it's all gone. Okay. I'm not going to bother upstairs, I'm going to go straight down to the train. Looks like the other train will set a light too. Okay, so we are going to go down. Yep, I'm not going to cross into there, but I'm going to completely bypass that. I 
That's as far as you can go, all the debris field. You can see in the other bottom of the elevator shaft, they're just throwing all that shit down there. I must say there's a lot of satanic insignia. Gonna go down to the next level. Okay. On top of the uh, debris field here, it's like everything has been thrown down here. See at the bottom of the elevator shaft pit? Just a bunch of crap, bunch of shit. Okay. I am out of here. Okay, so. We're going to head out Wow There's an amazing angle Look at that. Looks fucking incredibly rusty, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. This is, this is a different vibe in here for sure. Okay, okay, okay. Let's drive. Okay, heading to L3. I love the L3 because there's a section here that does look like the New York City subway, but uh, very cool. Take a lift. So this is the propellant terminal, missing the door. Whoa! Okay, a lot of dirt in this one here. Something definitely wrecks inside there. Yeah, the tunnel's still intact. Tunnel near the bottom right hand side. Got the uh, second level assembler here. We have a lot of dirt that is amassed there. And obviously the other uh, dirt came in when I opened up the lid, when I scrapped it out. Well, it was like a, a cork in a wine bottle almost, you know. And they just closed it up and then just backfilled again with about 25 feet of militarized dirt. Okay, so that is a propeller terminal in number three. Still pretty clean. They've uh, removed this level over here. There used to be a level here where you sort of walk across and the floor was up here, mind you.
So we are in the silo. First thing you see is some graffiti. Somebody's actually walked across. <laughs> I don't think it was Damien and his crew. Okay, this water is a lot deeper. A lot more dangerous here, sir. You see, water's still dripping down here. That's it? Yeah, that's solid. Yeah, once again. Yeah, that debris field. Completely scrapped. All the train, all the climatrons have all been scrapped out. They have left nothing in this. Kind of fortunate because we have a lot of equipment um, back in the day. I mean, you know, a lot of train, a lot of climatrons. All the other Fox Bros, a lot of consoles. Here at this particular Titan, much has been scrapped. As well as uh, desecrated walls and the bastardization of the English language as well. Elevator shaft here, elevator car has been scrapped. And this particular section over here, there's a there's actually there's actually a gantry crane all set up here. And they'll be able to like move things up and down into different levels. So with the other previous episodes of previous episodes of Nuclear Bunker Living. Uh, we've, we've actually drained out one of the uh, equipment buildings and we've been exploring each level kind of thing. Right now it looks like a shipwreck, kind of cool, but all the equipment is still down there. Every, all the equipment is still down there, which is kind of cool, so. And that'll be uh, restored and uh, brought back to life, you know, with new gauges and get all the meters working and all lit up. It'll look really cool. It's kind of interesting, like, I mean, it's, it just looks barren in here. It looks like a barren wasteland. You need the equipment, you know, as a tribute, as a reminder of the place used to look like kind of thing. So I feel here, they scrapped everything. There's nothing really left to salvage or even appreciate from a like, historical context that is, you know, so kind of sad. I mean, if you look down here, look at this, there's nothing, there is nothing down there. There is nothing down there but just junk and debris. Obviously, I can understand, you know, taking down walls, which we've already done, but uh, equipment, we're going to keep it. We're going we're gonna to work around it, because right? you want to appreciate the historical aesthetic, and you can work around that, for example. They're like a little landmarks, you know, so it'd be nice to have a little bit of a description as to what um, each uh, equipment was all about, which we'll, we'll most likely do. So, let's venture out. Back into our tunnel junction number 10, which is the other lobby area. First thing you notice too was, have a look at this. That black neoprene is fully exposed. It's probably dropped about two feet, but look at this. You can see the tunnel completely compromised. Have a look at all this. So it's dropped by two feet. I mean, the corrosion and the rust, the level of decay here is astronomical, I mean, it's, you know, but have a look at this. I have no idea what's going on over here. Looks like a mattress, but it's not. But anyway, you've got asbestos here. What really is interesting is you got these support beams here. At the uh, MB Out um, Titan, for example, we don't have, we don't have any of these uh, support beams. But the first thing you notice too is, look at this. The whole thing is almost caved in. Look at my head is. Yeah, this antenna tunnel is in really, really bad condition. Look at that. I mean, this is really bad. I mean, the level of condensation, decay, look at this. All these corrosive elements. 
I mean, this is double plate to galvanize, and you can see it's, it's even eating into it. All the wire in the conduit has been removed. Even these cable trays here, I mean, they've been salvaged, and there is nothing there. At the, uh, the time that we have, I mean, we have about you know, almost 3,000 feet of these uh, cable trays that run through the other tunnel system, the other labyrinth. That's copper. <sighs> we have carpet in the antenna tunnel. <sighs> that is a mattress. That tells me somebody was, somebody's gonna, some, somebody actually made a home of this some time ago. We've got a mattress here, we've got carpet there. Looks like it was a hideout for some time for somebody. Yeah, that's definitely a mattress. We've got carpet. I mean, the fact that they carpeted the tunnel. Back to water here. Oh wow. Wow. These antenna silos are absolutely destroyed. Look at this. The basement is non existent. Oh wow, it has been completely stripped, look at the blast door, this is the blast door, how'd they even manage that, damn, the catwalk is 100% removed, even the center, And I imagine Solo B over there would be pretty much the same. Let's go check it out. And this is all flooded. Wow. These are really bad condition. The decay is just really significant. Playing a game of a comparisonitis here, obviously. But um, when you look at the um, level of just degradation, it's like it's, it's immense. It really is. There's a lot of groundwater coming in, which I imagine as a sump pump, the original one, and water's just continually flowing in. I'm gonna check out the other one. Oh, look at this. It's a blast or what remains of it. Once again, it's kind of weird. Like, there was less engineering involved here. It's, it's kind of like they built a series of titans and all of a sudden they just ran out of cash or in order to justify some additional work for the other main contractor, which is um, Morris at Knudsen. They said, you know what, go for it, just build another two. It's on us. But this antenna silo, it's just way more compact, absolutely over here. What I do like about it is, now I can see what the elevator car looks, used to look like. So, you have two posts here. It's a turn. I measure it for like one or two people, and then go all the way to the top. There was also ladder access to the top of the catwalk. You cannot even get to the basement level. There is so much dirt. I imagine it's probably about 40 feet of earth that they've just opened up the solid doors and just dropped a whole shit of earth in there. There you are, there's the elevator car. And that's the actual shaft, which will, get you to the, which will get you to the other top level. Okay, so that was the antenna solos. A real massive, massive letdown. I mean, look at this. They even like just made it off with the blast doors. I mean, they cut it completely with some plasma torches. I feel incredibly appreciative in relation to what we have. 
um, major, major disappointment over there. The level of degradation, and just the decay. You know, some place looks like there was an earthquake, a lot of seismic activity, the rust, the corrosion, the level of water, and just I guess the 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 salvaging that was taking place. They were, they were ruthless. Just you know, there was no soul in the salvaging. I mean, it's just like they they took everything and just scrapped it out, left a whole bunch of crap they just couldn't like uh, discard or make away. With. But um, that is the Titan. That is another Titan. Another another. Uh, a level of observation was the how compact it is. Uh, definitely some of the ruins, for example, the silo looks a lot smaller, we'll say about 35 feet across. The power dome looks like about 100, 110 feet across, not 130, for example. Um, yeah, this is a more compact Titan. It's just kind of weird. It's like, yeah, I mean, I've had, I had to walk into a couple of rooms like twice just to confirm that, but definitely a way, way more, way more compact. And uh, the, the finale here in this, uh, in Tenasolo, where even the catwalk was removed. The catwalk. I mean, you got the other cat, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah. Makes you think how fortunate we are too. So, more episodes, we're gonna explore more Titans across the United States, uh, as well as um, we're, gonna be, we're gonna be off to uh, Arkansas to view a couple of Titan 2s. Um, yeah, so, a lot more episodes on route and uh, a lot more exploration as well as more remediation at the other type of facilities that we're currently working on too so that is it part two is done and we'll see you more with some more exploration coming up very very shortly